I'm in the remote Lao Island, which is one of the most beautiful places in all of Fiji. Talk about convenient coconut trees. You could just pick one right off without climbing anything. Oh wow, that water is unbelievable, crystal clear. It's so refreshing too. We're on a cruise with Captain Cook Cruises, going from island to island, and we've been invited to a number of villages where they specialize in authentic Fijian food. So we're gonna see some of the process. We're gonna enjoy the extreme natural beauty and eat some truly mm. traditional, authentic Fijian food. Hey everyone, good morning. It's Mark Weens. We have arrived this morning to the Gila Gila Islands, uh, which in English is known as the Bay of Islands. These are extremely beautiful islands in the Lao group of islands in remote Fiji. And we are about to jump on a small boat. We're gonna go through some of the islands to the main village. The village, the people who are the traditional landowners of this island. And we're about to jump on a boat to go to the village. What? <laughs> What do you have? Kava. And will that be for for the, the chief? Oh, okay. Yes. So it's important to bring kava. Always, it's our gift. Mm. Asking uh, permission for all the guests to um, swim in their waters. And... Oh, okay. Wow, beautiful morning, and we're on our way to the main village. Hello. Hello. The gentleman that welcomed us is, is my uncle. Oh, so you have some roots here? Yeah, in my, my bloodline started here. Oh, uh, man. In Vanombalago. Andy, are you related to everyone in Fiji? <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> Hula, so we are here in the village of Ndalidoni and this is on the beautiful island of Vanombolawo. This is one of the uh, beautiful island attractions in the Lao province. We are going to ask for permission to dock the ship here as well as to ask for permission to be able to film and to be able to uh, enjoy a locally cooked meal here in the village. And so that was a ceremony of uh, asking for permission with the elders of the village and presenting them with some kava as a ritual. But in this remote village, things are still, I mean, and throughout Fiji, things are still very much traditional. I mean, just fantastic how they have preserved the culture, the traditions. Okay, thank you very much. Vinaka. Vinaka. 
Thank you very much. And so we are all approved, so we're about to get started cooking. Moringa, right? Moringa. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. What is it called in Fiji? Boron India. Boron India. Yes. Sometimes we use cassava leaves. Oh, okay. The placement of this one. Oh, okay. Did you say the name of the, the dishes that you're preparing? V Vitu. Vakasakera. 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 Yeah. Vakasakera. And it originated from Dalidoni. <laughs> from this island here? It, it originated from this village on this island. And I think you can make it with a variety of different leaves. They said cassava leaves sometimes, but today they will be making it with moringa leaves. As she's slicing those moringa leaves, really that vegetal aroma just comes out of them. And then it's gonna be cooked with coconut, it's gonna be cooked with, there's gonna be fish, as well as these local shellfish that stick to the rocks that they harvested for this dish that's all gonna go into it. When we cook it, we cook it with everything. The, this part, this part, then we have to remove it. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is the fermented coconut. We call it kota in Fiji. Okay. So it's a fermented coconut that just adds more flavor to like the vakasakero if you're having sea grapes or nama. So this version, they've soaked it in the water, in the sea water. What is the process of the fermented coconut? Yes, two weeks in the sea. Two weeks uh -uh. under the uh -uh. salt water. Yeah. Wow. And then it will become soft. So that's kota, what we call it, kota. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Coconut cream is so essential in Fijian cuisine and always made fresh, extra thick, buttery, creamy. But then they also have a special uh, fermented coconut, grated fermented coconut, which is gonna go into the recipe as well. So we'll have to see how that goes into the recipe. That will boil first? Yes. Okay. So they call the fish locally dulu. Everything is from here, from the land. The barracuda, line cot, the shells, the moringa leaves, everything is local, everything is from right here. So they're just deboning the the barracuda now. Man, those moringa leaves are so durable and she's just rinsing them out and like wringing them out and kind of like mashing them into a paste by hand, squeezing them. Is this a dish that you eat very often or only on special days? Yes, special days. It's uh, on Sundays. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, we are having our summer uh, uh, ceremony. Okay. Ready to cook? How long will it cook for? Uh, half an hour. Okay. Okay. And that's everything? You will add anything else or that's no. That's everything is together yes. now and it will all combine together. Yeah. 
So they're just cooking that down until the coconut milk breaks, until the, it hits the oil point. So all of the like extra creamy richness until it thickens uh, and brings out the full flavor potential of that fresh coconut milk. But it is smelling extraordinary. Again, it has a really incredibly green aroma to it from those moringa leaves, plus the sweetness of the coconut milk. And so the dish is ready. The cassava is steamed as well as we have a baked cassava. And we're moving from the community center where they cooked to the backyard. And by that, I mean the beach to eat. This might be the world's most beautiful setting for a meal. Prepared with just ingredients right from this island that they've grown, that they've harvested, that they've fished themselves. This is truly an honor to be here. This is unbelievable. Andy, let's go for it. Fresh chilies from the village. So put down some chilies. Put down some chilies on the on the plate. Oh, these are little squeezed. Oh, they're so juicy. So you want to squeeze this onto your plate first. Then we got these small limes. Andy. Thank you. Oh, it's like a kumquat. Vaca sequera into the seasonings onto the plate. The coconut cream, the richness. Oh, all of the fish in there, all of the moringa leaves. Oh, that looks delicious. Okay, then I'll take a piece of the, the roasted cassava. This is, and this is yellow, yellow, yellow cassava, roasted underground. Okay, dig in, mix it with the, the kumquat juice, the chilies, the green chilies at the bottom there. Mm. 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 Wow. Good. Oh. Oh, that is so fresh. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that combination of the sweet coconut milk, the vegetal green moringa leaves, the the richness or the like kind of starchiness of the fish, and then those um those shellfish, which are a little bit chewy, kind of like a texture of abalone, very similar to abalone in texture, I think. Oh, the coconut milk just squeezes out. Mm. It's so healthy, it's so nutritious and flavorful. Put a smile to my face already. That is happiness. Mm. Happiness in Fiji. Happiness in Fiji. <laughs> Discover, what, what is it? Discover happiness. Fiji is where happiness finds you. Fiji is where happiness finds you. And with Vavaka Saker and Bonombola, it brings happiness instantly to your face. I think we have, I think happiness has found us. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Next up, I'll try the steamed cassava. Mm. Mm. I think that, that initial seasoning as well with the, the lime juice with the chilies, that brightens it up, brings out the flavor. I've already finished my oh. plate's empty, this is so good. Nicely done, <laughs> oh, nicely done. Mm. It's so good, it's so fresh. Load up a bit more. Then taste with the green chili. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. It's meal to start the day with. Yes. In Lao. Only in Lao, eh? Only in Lao. Mm. Mm. The combination of the fish, sea, snail, abalone like creatures is wonderful. The textures. <laughs> Oh, Vinaka, 
And now to finish our amazing meal, fresh coconuts right off the tree. This coconut tree is literally like steps from the sea, so you can already tell it's gonna have some of the best flavor, some of the best coconuts come from here with the mix of salinity. Ah. Oh, that's refreshing. Sweet. Oh, that hint of saltiness. There's few things better in life. So after lunch, we're just taking a little walk to get uh, up the hill a little bit to see a little bit of the island and the village, but coming across lots of moringa trees. This is where lunch came from. Getting some nice views of the island and the village now, and look at this mango tree, huge really old. Talk about convenient coconut trees. You could just pick one right off without, without climbing anything. This is a tropical paradise. Oh, man, it's beautiful. It's so lush and green. It's so fresh and clean. Okay, that completes our time in Dalithoni village. It's been unbelievable. The hospitality, the friendliness, the warm welcome, the delicious local food, and the natural beauty. We're gonna jump back on the boat and we are heading uh, on a tour of the Bay of Islands, which is one of the most beautiful, iconic views and natural landscapes in Fiji. Vinaka! Okay, oh, that brings our time on Vinuam Balavu to an end. What an island. Bye bye! Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we're, we are within the Bay of Islands. All oh, the water is unbelievably clean and pure and the limestone cliffs and formations. So we're gonna just take a swim and enjoy the water here for a little bit. Beautiful swim, refreshing. And that cave inside of there used to be a, a site for the ancestral gods of Fiji. Good morning, we've been sailing all night. Seas were pretty rough last night actually, uh, but we have arrived to the next island which is called Fulaga Island. This is known to be one of the most beautiful islands in Fiji in all of the South Pacific. And we're just about to arrive this early morning. We're gonna take another boat to the island, to the next village where they are going to prepare a local delicacy, the next meal. We're on our way and we're with captain, we're with a crew and again, we'll have a ceremony where we ask for permission to park the ship as well as permission to film and cook within the village. So 
we've come up to the beach. Tons of shells on this beach. Type of clam or cockle. And actually that's partly, uh, they have that in abundance here. That's what we're gonna be eating, one of the delicacies. But from here we have about a 20 minute hike to the village through the rainforest. So we are approaching the village now and to show respect as well as for the customs, we have now put on the Sulu, which is a, a wraparound to enter the village. It's just incredible how so much respect is shown and given to the traditional landowners. And so we met with the chief and we have his permission to start filming and to be here in this village. Really an honor to be here. Our local contact here also mentioned that I will be the first foreigner to ever film anything in this village. So a huge, huge honor to be here. What is the, the name of the village? Monedak. Monedak. Monedak village. In Fulaga Island. In Fulaga Island. And how many Lovely. people? It's, uh, Live here about. At the moment, it's close to 80. Okay. 80 people surrounding the village. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Vinaka. Yeah, straw. Oh, yeah. Could you put a straw? Okay. Straw in for me. Oh, Vinaka. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Vinaka. He has the coolest straws. I think it's the, the papaya stem. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that's so good. And the, the coconuts are really like pressure packed. When he pops that open, it just sprays out. Mm. Oh. oh, wow, that's a good coconut. Oh. Now the best part of the coconut, that flesh. Yeah. I like the coconut, but mm. the mm. Sweet, creamy coconuts in Fiji. So good. Next up, we've come out to the beach. Unbelievably beautiful. Some of the clearest turquoise water. And they're gonna go right out here and harvest some of the local clams, kind of like cockles, to be able to make the, the local dish for us. So we're about to head out in the water to harvest some of the, the, the seafood. Oh, you got some here, okay. Okay? Yeah. Wow, that water is unbelievable, crystal clear. It's so refreshing too, cool. That's as fresh as possible. Plucked right from there, and she's gonna open them up right now. Oh man, yeah, that is as fresh as possible. She uses the pliers to just pluck them open, spread the, spread the shell, and in, out comes that salinity, seawater juiciness. 
brininess and then plop them out. Those are plump. Okay, so they've made two different versions. I mean, plucked straight from the sea. One version is just squeezed with the bush lemon. They marinated in that with onions. And then one also includes coconut milk, one version. Oh, I want to get some of those onions and some of those chilies, some of the citrus down there as well. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Mmm. Oh, yes. That's so fresh. Yes. Mmm. The texture of it is incredible. Like, you think it's going to be a little bit chewy and leathery, but then it just kind of starts to melt as you keep chewing. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's amazing. And then we have another one. This one might be even fresher. Literally, these came out of the ocean. Breadfruit is nice and spongy to absorb all of that coconut milk. And the coconut flesh is in there, too. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Finger licking good again. Mm hmm. The smoky taste from this hot. Mm hmm. It's so soft. Yeah, you can taste the smoke. That's coming from the breadfruit, right? It adds another dimension. The breadfruit is so fluffy. It really is like a fluffy, fluffy loaf of bread. Oh wow. So these uh, cockles are really nice and plump and sweet. Again, literally five minutes out of the ocean, absorbed with the coconut milk and the onions. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. Oh man, that's <laughs> extraordinary. Mm. And as those cockles continue to marinate, the texture transforms. They become like, like meatier and leathery, but just so bouncy and sweet. Mm. Wow, those, those just ultimate, just fresh ingredients and everything from right here. perhaps the most beautiful beach I've ever had a meal on. I mean, oh, oh, wow. I mean, look, look at this. It is stunning. On our way to the next island, to the next village for a special dinner. The Lao Island group, it's just island after island. Pristine, ultra beauty, crystal clear turquoise. What's the name of the island and so the, the village? So the name of the island is Kambara and where we are right now is the village of Naikeleanga. All right. And this village is famous for having this white powdery this sand. This beach is yeah. spectacular yet again. Dinner tonight is going to be a Fijian lovo, which is the traditional underground oven cooking using hot rocks, which there are similar cultures around the world where they use this similar technique. 
and right now they've lit the fire as we've arrived to the village. They're burning logs and coconut husks, and you can see there's probably lava rocks within the fire that are heating up, and that's gonna bake our dinner tonight. There's gonna be pork and chicken, there's gonna be taro leaves, it's gonna be a feast. We're gonna be enjoying this lovo all together with the community, with the village. So they're gonna wrap the chicken in coconut leaves. In Fiji we call we call it tali. Tali na, na kaka, na, so it means cooking, putting the chicken in the coconut leaf to put into the lovo. So he just cut down a coconut branch and he just immediately starts weaving it. Oh, 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 so how they tallying? Normally in Vitilevu, they just tally with a coconut leaf. Whereas here they're putting what we call the bow leaves. These actually. This is a bow. Oh, okay. So it keeps the, seals in yeah, the, the seals in the flavor. The, the flavor. Cream. That was a fantastic wrapping technique. All natural, 100. Uh, percent I think everything else is ready to go. We're just waiting on the fire to heat up and the the rocks to heat fully, and then they'll load it all. So all the hot rocks at the bottom and now they, they top it with leaves and now all the, the food is going on top. Some things have been wrapped in foil, some things wrapped the traditional way. Everything is loaded in and they pile it in a strategic way as it cooks. So the taro is on the top and now they're just loading it up with palm branches with leaves. A mountain of herbs and leaves and the steam is spewing out. And now gunny sacks go on, a tarp. Canvas goes on and is shoveled on top of that mountain of green to seal in all of the steam and the smoke. How long will it cook for? Two hours. Two hours, okay. Oh, just two hours. This technique of cooking underground using hot rocks is practiced by so many cultures around the world. Yet there's different variations with the geography, with the natural vegetation, with the rocks. It makes each place unique and slightly different from every other version. We are waiting for the lovo. I am hanging out with the elders of the village who are pounding and are mixing up some kava. Now kava is a root which is pounded into a powder and it's something very special in the culture of Fiji. Okay, here it's my turn now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Vinaka, it does have a like peppery taste to it. Peppery and kind of very earthy tasting. So most of the time people will will hang out with family or yeah. friends and elders and drink yeah. kava. Yes. Okay. It's sort of a um, way to pass time and like socialize with all different family and friends. They get okay. together. Okay. Yeah, man. The wait is over. It's actually been maybe four hours drinking kava, spending time together, and now it's time to unearth the lovo. Oh, as they uncover that and uncover that, that sand, you can smell the, the vegetation at the top of the lovo, just that aroma coming out of it. It's still hot. The sand around it is still very hot. Okay, the reveal. Reveal of the truth. Alright. <laughs> Great, <laughs> <laughs> Man, even after four hours, it's just smoldering hot still. The aroma's coming out. You can now start to smell the meats, all of the different starches at the top. 
and then also just embedded with the aroma of the smoke. I mean, this technique, it smokes, it bakes, it kind of uh, roasts all at the same time. Ready to dish it out? Thank you very much. Okay, yes. Let's get it. Is that the lemon juice and yes, chilies? Yes, oh, nice. yes. Oh, nice. Get on. Yes. It's a must. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Okay, so first of all, thank you to everyone who has prepared this Lovo feast. It's really an honor to just have a meal here on the island to enjoy this beautiful Lovo feast. The Lao Wei. The Lao Wei, correct. The village elders um, got suggested that we mix the lemon juice with the chili with a little bit of salt water. Because oh. this sort of like gives it that really bright. That's for dipping into that's the... For, that's your dipping sauce. The... Let's start with that fish. Yes. Oh, it's still so hot and fresh. And only the fish or just the, okay, dip it into the yeah. first bite of the lovo. Maleka. Maleka. Finger licking good. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, even the fish has been baking for four hours and it's not dried out. The juices have been sealed into it. We can try what the Laoans eat, which is called falawa. So this is grated cassava. Some islands in Laos, they can't grow root crops, so this is a substitute for the root crops. You said it has sugar in it too? It but it's, sugar. Uh, but it's a little, Just a little bit of sugar for taste, oh, okay. coconut and okay. flour. Oh, it's really like, really dense. Mmm. That's really, really hearty, thick and starchy. You taste the coconut in there as well. Almost like doughy actually. Yes. Kind of like a dough. It's like a dough. Yeah. You can tell that that's very filling. The chicken is just melting, melting off the bone after four hours. And maybe do a combo with chicken with some of the falawa and of course a big dip. All right. Mm. Very good. Maleka. Maleka. <laughs> oh, we have some friends in the back. <laughs> the chicken just melts off the bone. Again, it's smoky um, because it's packed within that coconut leaf branch in a basket. And then also those leaves, they wrapped it in, that seals in the, yes, we, the, the juices the, of that. It's called the vow leaves. So it's sort of like as a insulation, it keeps the heat and the flavors mm. in, in the basket that it was put into. Definitely, definitely. And then Andy, what is this dish here? So this is palusam, it's taro leaves, and it's uh, stuffed with uh, onions and tomatoes and coconut cream. And the coconut cream is within there? Yes. And this is something that's a must for a lobo? It's a must for a lobo. You have to have, I mean, a lobo is not complete without palusami. Oh, I can't wait to try it. Go for it. So you want to reach in. Oh, 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 very hot. Mm. Leka. <laughs> really good. Mm -hmm. It's so soft and tender and so juicy. The onions give it a nice flavor. And the, I love this dipping sauce too. It's really good. Fresh citrus. So the, 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 the saltiness here is just with the salt water that's right off the beach. Seawater. Seawater with lemon and nice. chilies. That's why, oh. Make it tasty. Yeah. yeah, that makes it extremely tasty. That, it's juicy and tasty and just yes. salty from the seawater. Yes. Oh, that's impressively good. <laughs> Best dipping sauce, yeah. Yes. Wow. It's because the Laos seas. Mm -hmm. The seas in Laos are pure. The sea is so yeah. clean. Clean. <laughs> so clean. Now you can use it as a dipping sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a meal. Thank you to everyone who prepared this. The taro leaves themselves have a really nice nuttiness and the flavor of the richness of the coconut milk to just bring it all together. And everything is just embedded with the smoke and the steam from the lovo. It's one of the great methods of cooking for a large group, but also one of the great culinary traditions. Excellent. Wow, it is extremely dark. Once it gets dark here, there's just zero light pollution. 
over the, the ocean. But uh, what an incredible time visiting the villages of Laos, remote islands of Laos, group of islands in Fiji, and learning about the culture, the food, the people have been so hospitable, so welcoming, so friendly. And I mean, these islands are so remote, it would have been impossible to get here on our own. I mean, this cruise is a fantastic way to be able to get to these remote islands and visit these unseen islands um, and experience them. So huge thank you to Captain Cook Cruises for arranging this and for taking us here, for transporting us, um, and for all the staff for everything they did to arrange all of these experiences. And a huge thank you to my friend Andy Blake uh, for putting it all together, for arranging it. Yeah, what a time we've had here in Fiji learning about the food. And that's gonna be it for this video. I wanna say a huge thank you for watching. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. Remember to leave a comment if you enjoyed it. And remember to keep on watching lots more Fijian food videos. Thanks again for watching. Good night from the remote Lao Islands group and I'll see you on the next video.